I mean, there's, there's, you find pottery in places, but it's always near the rivers. Like there's evidence of ancient civilizations. You want to hear the craziest thing. One of my guys found a stone ax head. Now here's the thing. The uncontacted don't have rocks. You won't find a rock on our river. There's clay. There are no rocks. They found a stone ax head in the jungle at a site from the uncontacted. But what that means is that the uncontacted tribe had a stone ax head that was that they've been holding on to since like Inca times. Wow. And someone forgot it at the camp. And so you're talking about civilization carrying around something from a previous civilization that they don't know where they got it from. It's like incredible. Wow. Because you cannot find a, there are There are no rocks like that on a river. It was like a, a smooth gray stone shaped into like a blunt ax head with, you know, made, you know, so you could attach it to a stick. And they found this on the beach and they'd been using it to like clean turtles. But we don't have those rocks. That's more like an Inca type of thing. So this has been floating around through various people's hands in the jungle for decades, centuries, who knows. And what do they think about where that came from? It's wow. lost technology that they don't understand anymore. So the thing about the lost city of Z was that there was a previous expedition that had encountered these cities and these incredible, yes. beautiful, complex cities. And they described how elaborate their clothing was and their culture, their agriculture. And so then when the next expedition went back, there was no one was there gone. because yeah. they had killed everybody with diseases. This is the, yeah. that's yeah. the theory, right? Yeah. And I mean, Oriana was the first person to like go descend the Amazon, which the thing that always dr drove me crazy about that was that they came down the Andes, made their way down the entire Amazon, and then like looked at the stars, figured out where Spain was, built a whole other ship and sailed home. Like, <laughs> think about that for a second. They built a whole other you ship. You built a whole pirate ship and sailed to Spain based off the stars. Wow. And like now, like you look at us now and it's like, are we smarter than that now? Like how many people can find your way anywhere without like But what is smart, phone? really? You know, I, what, what yeah. smart is, is your ability to use information correctly. Now, what information do you have? Like they had information that we don't have because they needed to be able to navigate using the stars and they didn't have to deal with the kind of night pollution that we have. The light pollution that we yeah. have at night is, it's one of the greatest tragedies about modern civilization is that we've blacked out one of the most spectacular things yeah. that you could ever see. The thing that really centers us and humbles us, which so. is the view of the stars. Yeah. There, I went to the Keck Observatory a few years back. I went last year, but it was really good last year, but not this one time. The Keck Observatory is in Hawaii on the Big Island, and you go way, way, way up through the clouds. Mm -hmm. And the view of the cosmos is like you are in a spaceship with a clear glass windshield, and you see everything. There's no light pollution on the island because they have diffused lighting for all their street lights, specifically designed so that it doesn't fuck with the telescopes. Wow. And so when you're up there, the, I'll never forget it. The, I, the one time that I went, which was at least 15 years ago, maybe 16 years ago, that one time was so spectacular that it changed my view of like earth in in the relationship to the cosmos just by seeing it because you see the milky way mm -hmm. you see mm -hmm. everything you see all the stars it just took my breath away i couldn't stop staring at it i was like this is insane and then i was thinking god this is everywhere this is what th the ancients used to see before mm -hmm. we figured out electricity and blunted it all yeah, and and r ruined our relationship with the cosmos visually, because that's what every city does. When you look up at the night sky, you don't see jack shit in New York City. You see a star. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's the moon. That's it. What what is up there is the, literally the most spectacular thing that humans could ever witness, and it's there every night if you don't have light pollution and cloud cover. So, like, you're saying, like, it would be, like, almost, like, more stars than black. You Just see like everything, completely. man. You see yeah. ev It's incredible. So, they're very careful at the observatory. There's no lights that get in the way of anything. So, when you get outside of the building and there's just people lined up on the roads and on the hills that are just staring up at the sky. Because it's perfect. It's insane. Yeah. It's insane. It's so many stars. It's everything. That's what it looks like. That's literally, <sighs> that's literally exactly yeah. what it yeah. looks like. 
That is with the your naked eye. Tar- with your naked eye, man. Jeez. It's amazing. But it's this understanding that that's up there all the time and you can't see it because yeah. of light pollution. But see, that to me is so much of what we're doing with nature right now, where it's yes. like we're dulling it down. Yeah. We live in this incredible reality and it's like we're dulling it down. Like, like, in the Eastern Cape, where I've been working with the guys from Vetpaw, like the elephants have smaller tusks or no tusks because of poaching. Mm. And it's like you're taking this incredible, monstrous, giant. So, so land is that animal. a natural selection thing? Like the the ones that have smaller tusks are allowed to survive it's because so they're the, targeted. Yeah, right. they're targeted for the big tusks. So the big tusk ones are getting killed, yeah. and so somehow in response to that yeah. they're developing smaller tusks so that they're less attractive to the point that they're even having no tusks it's like it, it gen- like genetically bottlenecked them so quickly because over the last hundred years out, the humans were all going for the big tuskers and now these monster tuskers like the really big ones where they touch the ground there's only a few of them left that is so wild and so we and then moose like in maine they have smaller antlers and like mm. we're actually like we're, we're we're dulling down the 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 magnificence of the of the universe like when you look at those pictures you're like why don't i see that a picture if we saw that every night right how different we'd be how much more connected we'd oh be. yeah it's it's so humbling i feel like that's there's a thing about mountain communities ocean mm-hmm. communities where you're you're confronted with nature that's on such a, a scale of beauty and and magnificence that you you're you're overwhelmed by it. And it's, yeah. You're automatically humbled just by your environment and your surroundings. There's the same thing about oceans. Yeah. Like you look out to the, it's so humbling because it's so immense and there's so much power and energy and life. It's just like, wow, it just puts you in your place. And the sky is supposed to do that too. Yeah. There's a relationship that we have to the cosmos when you look up that is like, okay, yeah, this is this is the real mystery of, of life and of existence, yes. that we, uh, we fly through infinity on an organic spaceship every day. And that's what's really going on. It's not, it's not stationary. It's literally spiraling through the universe. And, and that exact sort of wonder is what I feel when I wake up in the jungle and you, you dip your hands in and you drink the river. Mm. And then in the afternoon, that you, you literally watch your sweat come off your forehead. You hold your hand in the sunlight and watch it go into the air and join the mist from the jungle. Oh, wow. And then at 4 p.m., you get that thunderstorm and it comes back. And that cycle is moving through you. Wow. And it's like you are so connected to nature there. You are so, it's so apparent that like you, you, you can't not be in absolute awe. And like you see this, and again, we're out there, we see the stars at night like that, where it's like you can see the Milky Way. It's a belt across the sky. And there are these animals and these consciousnesses moving and it's all working together 